Hi, morning everybody. Um, thanks so much for joining uh, this IAL session um, in association with Empower Development, um, which Samantha Ridgewell, Managing Director, is kindly running for us. Um, so today the session is um, a modern approach to CII qualifications. Um, Sam is going to take you through some kind of techniques, some resources, anything basically to help you with your CII studies. Um, as Sam said, we're quite a small group. Um, please feel free to put your cameras on if you'd like to. It's really nice if she has faces to talk to. Um, we also have the chat function at the bottom. So um, feel free to write comments as we go along. Uh, we try to make it as interactive as possible so that you can get the most out of this session as you want to. Um, we are recording it. So there will be a playback um, available, which will be accessible on the IIL website and also via Empower Development's YouTube channel. So um, yeah, please, um, please, we encourage you to get involved um, to make sure that you can get the most out of this session. Um, and thank you again to Sam and over to you. Brilliant. All right. Thanks, Gemma. OK, welcome, everyone. So we're going to go. We've got um, three topics we're going to cover through today. We're going to do diploma CIR versus advanced diploma coursework. I'm um, going to go through these uh, as a bit of a summary in comparison to how it changes between dip, what's expected of you there, what's expected of you in advanced diploma there as well. Um, then we're going to have a look at some of the modern resources available for you, just to make your lives easier, make your CII fit into your lives um, and also make it a little bit more engaging. Uh, a lot of free resources for you as well there that you make sure you can make the most out of. And then some motivation techniques, so how to work through those assignments in particular, um, because I think assignments are as much about motivation as they are about hard work. So give you some techniques to um, go through there. So um just get a little bit of a feel from you as we go through uh just kind of anyone who hasn't shared with me where you are in your journey yet um so this is our infographic on on the journey towards getting your ACII so certificate diploma advanced diploma how to add up all your points and credit as you get along and um, I think it looks like sort of the majority of you are just about finishing diploma moving on to ACII from the the, the um comments that we've got so far but it looks like a few of you are doing your certificate as well so we will cover off um, with each of those um, coming through. So some people still coming in. So let's think so much. Okay. So I'm going to go start off with coursework. I am going to go through this bit quite quickly because we could spend an hour just doing approach to coursework for each of these. And in fact, we do. Um, so if you want more information as we run through these sections, feel free to head over to our YouTube channel. I will show you it in a little while as well. Um, but it is all available there for you in more detail too. So when we're looking at diploma coursework, first of all, diploma level, if we look at the CII, what they're testing you for, certificate, they want to know that you understand concepts. And they're doing that by testing your knowledge, your understanding of jargon. Diploma is all about understanding what's in the book, but pushing your knowledge a little bit more outside of just asking you questions and seeing how you might um, answer, be able to answer with more context in the situation. What it is focusing on is you reading and understanding the book and then applying the book to the answer. And that's really key because sometimes I think when you talk to your colleagues about coursework, if you are studying for your diploma and you're talking to someone doing their advanced diploma, they're gonna to talk to you about application of knowledge, references, research, and all of these things that sometimes if you're studying a diploma, you think you need to do and that actually at this level, it's not quite required yet. Diploma is all about finding the answer in the book and apply it to this question scenario. So it is quite a high word camp. There's a lot to talk about, but because it's broken down in different questions, you've got 10 different questions in there, you will find that you come to that word count quite quickly. And in fact, a lot of the time people do end up struggling to keep within it. It's really important you stay within it. If you go over 10%, the person who's marking it is just going to stop reading. So they won't give you any credit for extra words. You do have to make sure you stay within that um, criteria in there. And you have got the deadline for the whole enrollment period when you're doing your coursework. Uh, so this one, six months for the coursework and then the exam. Um, please get the coursework done as soon as you can. What I sometimes hear, in fact, too often hear, are people who book their exam and then they can't motivate themselves to do the coursework. They end up sitting the exam and then doing the coursework afterwards. The coursework is going to help you revise. It's all content from the book. So that journey through the coursework is absolutely exam preparation. 
So get through it as quick as you can. And then I would suggest you move on to do the exam quite quickly after you've submitted that coursework because you've got that understanding all in your mind there as well. So when we go through diploma level coursework, we're looking at learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are essentially the CII's way of saying for somebody to have passed this module, they need to have this amount of awareness of these particular subjects. So learning outcomes are all available for you on your specimen coursework. If you just take a look um, at, at uh, M92 and M05 here, what you can see is the learning outcomes don't always align to the chapter. So sometimes we see individuals send in a message to us saying, I can't find anything about my question in the book. And um, that's often because the section of the book you're looking to is aligning to the question number rather than the learning outcome. So if you can see what your question is, so we've got question number four, for example, for MO5, it's learning outcome five, which is chapter three, five, and six. So your answer is going to come from those three different places to be able to pull together. Now, in terms of marking, if we imagine you are the marker, whenever you're doing a piece of work for submission, whether it's a piece of coursework or whether it's a nomination form or a job application, the best way of writing something is to consider the other person's point of view as they're reading it. So if you are the marker, you are going to go through and essentially find how many marks you can give somebody and tick them off. So if we've got this example question here, for section A, we've got 12 marks. Those 12 marks are coming from six points, which each of them um, have a further consideration. So when we're answering that question, we want to make sure we've got six points each with a consideration. And essentially then we can tick ourselves off and say, I can see I've got 12 points in there. That's gonna give me my 12 marks. And then equally, if we go on to B and then C, you can see it's just four marks. So the amount that you're writing when we're looking at your work count should be proportional to how many, word, uh, how many marks you're gonna get for each of those sections. Now the CII do actually really try and make um, things as clear for you as possible. Um, they have some really good guidance. And one of the things that's worth familiarizing yourself with is the different terminology that they use in question writing and what they're actually asking you to do. So for example, if you are being asked to explain something, they're saying, please make this something that's clear and easy to understand with some reasoning or justification rather than identify, just recognize a name. So identify is gonna tell you it's a lot less information required than an explanation. So it's give you a much clearer understanding of how to pull together your answers. And this is actually in place for your diploma as well as your advanced diploma, one on this slide. Now, when you're looking at your diploma modules, it's worth spending as much time planning as you are writing. So consider the question, refer back to the book, Think about which sections it relates to, make a bit of a plan for it, and then you can start writing the answer. We are gonna look at motivation in this session. Like I said, motivation is often one of the hardest things. Set deadlines for yourself, communicate them to other people so you can move along with those as well. Make sure you can um, progress through that coursework, get it out of the way before you're sitting the exam. You've got some requirements around uh, text size, but one of the things that I think people and underestimate the impact of is the structure of the piece of writing. So again, if you imagine you're the person marking these, and let's say you get sent 30 different pieces of coursework every month to read, you are going to want to read them in a really easy structured format. Big chunks of text are very hard for people to stay engaged with, but also to fight to cite what they need to get from them. So headings, subheadings, Bullet points, a space between your uh, different sections is absolutely encouraged. Make it look pleasant for the person who's going to be marking it from the moment they can pick it up. Because if they can work their way through your questions easier, they can find your answers easier as well. So avoid big blocks of text and make it easy to direct yourself for it. Now, one thing I recommend you do once you've completed your coursework is put it aside and put it aside for two or three days and then pick it up again. 
Imagine you probably had this experience at work before where you completed a piece of work and a few months later you had to refer back to it and you look at it and think, oh, I made a mistake there. Oh, that didn't make any sense. Oh, I could have made that clearer. Because you're coming back to it after that period of time, you've got a fresh pair of eyes. You can see things much easier than when you'd read it so many times and you've had your head stuck in it for so long that it was all starting to blur together. So once you've made your uh, piece of coursework, once it's ready to go, Try and hold off submitting it just for a couple of days and give it one final read over. Personally, I like to do that by printing it out. I would always pick up my mistakes much clearer when I'm reading through with a, a red pen in my hand to press things out, okay, than looking at it on the screen. And then if we're looking in particular at MO5, there's some additional guidance really in how we go about that. Now, for those of you um, who have uh, who are on the MO5 journey. This is the insurance module. Everyone's got to do this one. Um, it's not as bad as people say, I really do find, uh, but it is slightly different to other ways that we, we get marked and considered. So it's just worth understanding that. The thing about the law is we are making judgments. That's why we have judges. And the whole idea of judges is for you to weigh up different scenarios. There's always going to be an argument for and an argument against. That's why we have the disagreements to begin with. So the answer isn't always completely clear. It's not a mathematical equation. So what they're asking you to do when it comes to the law module is to identify what's going on in the situation, identify what they want you to do in the question, and then think about the context. So for example, are they talking about a minor? Are they talking about a sole trader? Are we talking about a scenario where somebody knew what they were doing, or is it just an accident? All of these types of considerations are going to impact the judgment that you, taking the role of the judge, answering your questions, are going to give. So you want to apply the law. And the law, quite often, and the book is very good at doing this, will have more than one scenario with different outcomes. So we might see a situation which will tell us that if we copy this case, clear as day, this is going to be the answer. But also in the chapter, we've got some other cases where we can see some exceptions to the rule. Because, for example, there was an um, extra consideration around uh, a thin skull rule where we need to have uh, extra awareness for the fact that individuals might get e easier injured than other people. So we'll have a cons consistent principle, but we'll have some exceptions in there as well, which we can weigh up into our answer. So you need to argue for and against the case and then come to your conclusion. If you are just picking your answer, you're almost similar to a maths equation, not doing your workings out. And you get points for your workings out. Okay, now let me take a look instead at the advanced diploma module. So for advanced diploma, we pretty much have no exams now, there's a couple of exceptions there. You're pretty much all onto coursework. So you've got your enrollment and then you've got three assignments that you're going to be working through. Now, I would say to you, 12 months is quite a long time to spend on a module. So if we go back to before the coursework was in place, what we tended to see was people would complete three or four diploma and advanced diploma modules in a year, quite, quite, quite commonly. Okay? So it's a nice deadline to give yourselves, I think, three to four months for one piece of advanced diploma. Now, of course, different situations, different levels of motivation, you can absolutely drag that out the 12 months if you want to. But if you want a realistic deadline to, to push yourself to, three to four months can be realistic. Um, and we're looking here at, at trying to make sure that we get one assignment done um, over each of those periods and 50% in order to pass. Now, where I mentioned with diploma, we're looking at you finding the answers in the book. Advanced diploma is entirely different. Advanced Diploma wants to find out what you think. So this is a lot more about you going into the book and understanding what's being said in it, but sometimes you might find the book only has half a page of text on the topic that's been covered. That's because they want you to take that concept and run with it. Go online, go and find some articles, do your own research, find some other books, broaden your knowledge of that topic, talk about that, and then apply it to the scenario or the business that you're looking at. 
So what might it look like if you're looking at a large organization compared to a small organization, a new organization compared to one that's been around for a long time, one that has a high risk appetite one compared to one that's risk averse. Okay, so what are all of the subjective scenarios within the business you're looking at that will mean the application process might vary? So this is you essentially giving your opinion. They wanna know what you think now. And that's where you get most of your marks. That application is all about um, what your opinions are and how it's gonna work in that scenario. You get 10% for structure. Again, not big blocks of text. I think this is a nice way of demonstrating just how much the markers want that. 10% for headings, for having clear paragraphing, for using diagrams, for using bullet points. You get points for structuring it in a visually appearing clear way. Um, and then use of relevant work examples or further reading. So essentially your references, where are you picking out extra information? And we're going to come onto that later on as well. Okay. When you are doing advanced diploma, you are usually writing an essay. Just make sure you check in the questions. Sometimes they do ask you to write a report or something else instead. Um, but it is about putting it forward, again, in a logical structure. So introduce, what are you going to talk about? Who is the organization? What size is that organization? What's their turnover? What type of business are they in? And what is the structure within that organization? Things that are relevant. And also remembering that it might be an organization you know very well, but you work there. But your mark has not got that same understanding. So you're trying to make it clear to them what is the background before you're going in to answer the question. Uh, the middle section is essentially you answering the question, you're putting in different points of view, you're weighing things up, putting in all of your information, the research that you've got. And then conclusion is essentially, what do you think? So weighing all of this up, what do you think the answer is? And with that, it's really important to have recommendations. So what do you suggest for that organisation? How should they be spending their time or resources? What do you think they should be doing? So make a recommendation and make sure it's justified, but justified with information that you had expanded on within the middle section. So we shouldn't really be having any new information in the conclusion, but it should be summing up what you think based on all the context that you've already added in. Okay. So any questions on coursework? I can go into these in a little bit more detail. Um, if you would like at this point, otherwise we'll go in and have a look at some of these resources for you. Um, okay, let's go across. All right, so um, there are a few places I'm going to suggest to you first of all. Now, the first thing we have is a, a website with a whole bunch of free resources for you. Whatever level you're at, you're going to find something in here. Um, so you can see we've got free revision cards. So for our revision cards, we've got them for um, a whole range of modules from certificate up to diploma level. Um, we just charge you postage for these ones and then we send them out to you free of charge. So you can go straight in and claim a free set of revision cards and you can pass this on to as many people as you want um, until we run out of them. But we do have around 100 of all of the different modules, so we should be OK for a little while. Um, if you're on coursework uh, and you're in advanced applying the coursework, you might be past the need for revision cards. No more exams for you. Fantastic. And um, so what is going to help you? Uh, we've got a whole bunch of free webinars, including a one hour session on deployment modules. Um, and a one hour session on advanced diploma modules. So going through those coursework uh, sort of summaries in much more detail for you in there. Um, you can sign on to them live, but if you don't want to sign on to them live, you can just go into our YouTube and watch them. We've got um, dozens of CII uh, content here available for you in the YouTube section too. Um, if you are studying and you have questions, so questions that come up for you, the only exception is questions that are related to your coursework. We can answer questions about coursework, but not relating to your questions, of course. Please don't tell us your questions. Um, you can join us here on Facebook 
if you drop the question into the group, then we do lives on there once a week and we do go through and we answer questions um, on all different modules. So you can just send us in whatever it is that you're curious to find out more about. Um, um, we've got uh, workbooks for LM1. I think somebody said they're doing LM1 in the chat box earlier. You can claim one of those for free there as well. Um, and then we have our credit sheet. So if you're going through and you're doing your certificate module and you know that you've done LM1, LM2 and LM3, fantastic, we've got our diploma. So let's say we're then gonna do law, we're doing delegated authority, we're gonna do claims practice and somebody said they're doing tart cargo. Great, we've got 90 credits, but something's not right. Why is it not turned green? Hey, we haven't done a business module yet. So if we then go through and do economics and business, you can see it turns green for diploma level. And then as we go through and we complete our advanced diploma, our five different modules, we're gonna see completion coming in through there as well. More set of credits. So this is working out for you the total credits needed at each different level to make sure you tick enough boxes and make sure you can achieve your advanced diploma. So if any of you are trying to work out what to study and, and how that's going to add up, you can come in here and have a go at it. One thing I would just say to you here, I think somebody said that uh, a few of you do an M92, a common misconception is if you do M92 that you don't have to do 530. Um, you don't have to, but you can do. And you will no doubt find that M92 will help you do 530. The reason you don't have to do both is because there's quite a lot of crossover. If you've just done M92, then the first piece of coursework I usually suggest to you to do at Advanced Diploma is Economics and Business 530, because all the stuff you've learned in that book is going to help give you a grounding foundation of knowledge before you jump into that coursework in there too. Okay, and then we've also got module summaries. So this takes you into our YouTube. So you can go in and have a look at just two minute summaries of each of the modules, telling you what's included in the module, what the pass rate is, where there is one, and um, who tends to sign up to it in terms of their lines of business, the different roles, uh, which ones you might want to do, which ones you might avoid. Um, myself and Grace give our opinions on which ones we enjoyed the most and the least as well. So you can get that little bit of guidance before you sign up to things on your own. And then in terms of content, um, Everybody on this webinar is going to get a freebie today. Congratulations for turning up live. Um, all you need to do is email um, our team with what module you are studying. And we will set you up with a freebie to try out this course for yourselves for one week. So I'll show you what's in here and you can make sure you make the most of it. So what we've essentially done to modernize the way CII has been done, for decades you get a textbook, you have an exam. You might get a live training session in the middle on a fixed date, but the truth is now we are a lot more used to accessing what we want when we want and as many times as we want. We like YouTube, if you're like me, we like TikTok. Okay? So we've designed a platform that allows you to access your revision whenever you want, um, as many times as you want, and in a much more engaging way. So let's say, for example, we're studying for law. You're gonna see videos coming through and these videos, in this case, be summarized in cartoons, was at a cafe telling you the story, making it visually memorable ice cream float so that when you're sat in your exam and we've had this feedback from people, you can picture our cartoons to make it easier to piece it all together. We've got subtitles as well and um, make it easier for you to read on the go uh, for those people that um, like that in terms of how you absorb information. There was no contract. So we'll have cases in here. We have conversations where we round up what's in each chapter. chapter two. Um, so quite a big chapter, and this is where we're really starting to... The other thing that we do is really summarise what's in the book. General. So where we've got large sections in the book, the we'll summarise it down, be more familiar key to you content your previous you need to know you do in order to pass the exam. A contract is a linear binding down, so usually about 15, 20 minutes of content. Note in this chapter, we are discussing general contract. You'll also get practice questions and you have audio only. So if you like to revise um, on the go, if you want to listen while you're driving to work, whilst you're out for a run, you can listen to audio only options so you can hear it on the go. Another thing we have in here that's incredibly popular is our what you need to knows. These are one hour summaries of the whole book. So okay. sneak preview uh, there. Um, we've been making it. lots of videos like this on key cases. So to uh, you can access a whole summary of MI5, for example, in there for 
uh, in, within one hour, which you can listen to. I always recommend the day before your exam, a good couple of times. If there's everything that's coming up in there, you know, you're comfortable with, then you're good to go. There's also that guidance, like I said, on diploma, coursework, um, and structured poster. But for advanced diploma, advanced diploma, you kind of often get left alone. Hey, by the time you're doing coursework, there's not much help for you. Um, so what we've designed here is a resource hub. So we have essentially thought of all of the things that we think might help you with your coursework, in particular about learning around the topic. So there is a section on essentially navigating your way first through the coursework, so how to approach the coursework, how to make sure you're getting those marks within each section, how to apply to reference them, and how to apply your journey. Then we will go through um, a whole section of interviews. So we've interviewed subject matter experts. You might recognize some of the names on here. There's some um, absolute heroes across the CII world. Uh, so Charlotte War, for example, um, uh, Mark Butterworth literally wrote the book on 990. Okay, so we can interview these people and ask their opinions on things. So for each interview, we've got three topics included. So when you know your question, because we don't know your question and we don't want to, when you know your question, you can go through and work out which interviews might apply to it. And you can then use this interview as something to reference into your coursework. And um, if you want to do your own interviews, please feel encouraged to. This is one thing that I did when I did my ACII. Um, I worked in HR when I did my ACII. So I didn't know that much firsthand about what was going on in the market. So I just interviewed people within the business and quoted them within the coursework. So feel encouraged to go out and conduct your own interviews as well. We go through some technical topics, some refreshing topics, so things that have come up in other modules that might come up again. Um, and then in a nutshell, this is where we sum up quite a large concept in a nutshell. Um, so a one minute summary um, of, of different key co uh, topics. And then we'll do perspectives and scenarios. So we'll talk, for example, about corporate social responsibility, on something you might get asked a question we're talking about on. Corporate social and as we do it, we apply it to different businesses. So yeah, we'll so our opinions in here. Yeah, us. Kids cancer charity. And then we'll go well. around different websites. Um, and, so, uh, they are, and this is the process that you should be nominated doing yourselves. partners, if you like. Um, so we'll go on and show you there where you find this information on company websites, what you can read into it, and how you can talk about it during your um, during your exam uh, coursework. And then things like uh, reports. So reading an annual report. So how an annual report might be. Um, might appear on a company's website, what it's telling you and how you can use that in your question. So here, for example, we've done it for Beasley. You can look at the process that we go through and then go through the same process for your own organization to apply that. And then we have a whole bunch of recommended places that you might want to go for some references and some guidance um, to help you work out where to do some further reading. Again, we've covered all the key topics because we don't know your questions. Um, and then we have some general places that we highly recommend to you um, to go through and do some research as well. So all of these places have really good um, content that relate to a whole range of different topics. So including articles, uh, papers, but also podcasts for you there as well. Any questions on that? Before we come back into the slides. Does it look fun? Let me know if you think that looks good. Um, we'll set you all up with free access. Anyone who wants free access, the only condition is that you claim it today. Um, you can tell your colleagues, they can say they were here as long as they claim it today. So we just put a deadline on for the end of the day for today's giveaway and that will be for one week. Okay. So let's come back to motivation. Okay, so. When we are worried about situations, when we've got a lot on our mind, um, it, there is a lot for us to consider. Stephen Covey wrote the book, highly, uh, Seven Habits of Highly um, uh, Effective People. And what he identified was people who had achieved what they'd set out to with their goals. So this might be, for example, um, setting out uh, career goals, financial goals, sporting goals. And he identified what they all consistently did that helped them get there. And the first habit was about being proactive. 
proactive people he identified were able to, in a given situation, focus on what they can do, control the controllables. So when we look at things like coursework and we have busy lives and busy jobs, it can be really quite a stressful time for us. And being able to think, right, I'm going to focus on my coursework this evening, when in reality we've had an early start, a long day, uh, maybe a drink after work, it just becomes unrealistic for us. And then we can start feeling annoyed at ourselves, we can start kicking ourselves that we haven't done the goals that we set out to that week, and then end up feeling less motivated to pick it up. So what Covey suggests is that when we have a given situation, we ask ourselves, so what? So what can I do about this? So what I'm gonna ask you to do right now is identify what is the biggest hurdle you are facing right now to completing the next stage in your qualification? What is your biggest challenge? You don't need to tell anyone, you can put it in the chat box if you want to, but can you just write it down ideally in front of you on a piece of paper? Certainly make sure you've noted it in your head. What is your biggest challenge? Okay, so once you've identified your biggest challenge, I want you to um, answer for yourself, what can you do to reduce the negative impact of that challenge? Just one thing you can do. If you've got that one thing you can do, now I want you to make it a small, sizable piece, something you can handle today, tomorrow, at the latest this weekend. Okay. So what immediate action can you take to move towards reducing that challenge? And whatever that is, I'd like you to write it down in your to-do list, your actual to-do list, where you get things done, you tick things off. Okay. So controlling the controllables is about focusing on those things that we can do and putting our energy there. You'll feel so much more successful in how you're applying your time if we focus on the things that we can actually do something about. So for example, rather than worrying that I've got a really busy job right now, my manager's expecting lots of things from me, Hey, there's no way I can balance all of this work. That's external. Hey, okay? once we make it controllable, it becomes I need to have a conversation with my manager. I need to work out what's realistic for me to, to do in terms of my studies compared to my work. I need to work out what is a realistic amount of time for me to spend of my own time studying for my exams. And then I need to set the schedule so I can do it. And it might be that you want to spend eight hours a week and actually for a few weeks, it's only going to be an hour and a half. But it's just about making sure we are taking those steps that we can do something about it rather than writing the whole thing off because we feel like there's some things that we can't. How many of you wrote time? Any of you write time in the chat box? Let me know. Yeah. Any of you coming through? Okay, so Stephen Covey, cabin number three, uh, is the time management matrix. Fantastic, always the most, most, one of the most popular ones at one time. So time management um, matrix is, is his third habit, which is about people being able to put first things first. Essentially, people being able to identify how they should spend their time. What happens when we are in work, but this would often happen for you out of work as well, is we will spend lots of time in these two boxes. We will deal with things that are urgent and important. There's an immediate incident that's going on that you need to be involved in, a client picked up the phone to you with a problem and you need to solve it, or something's urgent, but it's not important for you. You've been pulled into a meeting, okay? There's nothing you can do, you're now in that meeting, but it's not really one that you necessarily need to be in. Somebody's asked you to help them out with a favor last minute, okay? it's not gonna help you in your role, but you do need to really help them. Now, when we spend lots of time in this section, we actually feel a little bit good about ourselves. We can tick those things off in the to-do list. We get a little bit of uh, dopamine from it. We feel a little bit proud of ourselves. It's like a pat on the back. But it's exhausting. 
So once we're done, we go and hang out over here. Low importance, low urgency. Go and have a chat at the coffee area for a little while. Rearrange our uh, emails and, and re, re tidy up our to-do list and distract ourselves from things that we don't really need to be focusing on. Whereas the section we ignore the most is what Covey identified as the one that has the biggest impact. High importance, low urgency. Absolutely your revision, your coursework is gonna sit in here. Equally things like investing in relationships with clients and colleagues at work, improving your processes rather than just dealing with the questions that keep coming through. These are the things that will save you time and make things easier for you in the long term. It's making the future version of yourself get rewards. So high importance, low urgency is essentially the priority. Now you might've seen an illustration like this before, some brilliant video um, examples. Both jars have the same amount of stones in them. The jar on the left starts with the little stones, starts with all those urgent things. And then by the time they're trying to put in those big, really important rocks, there's no room for them. The jar on the right has the same amount of stones, but it started with the big ones and everything else found a way to fit in. Now I'd like to think none of you have ever canceled a holiday, certainly a holiday abroad because you were busy with work. If your CEO asked you for a meeting at three o'clock today, you would drop everything, you would find the time. But when it comes to things that are often our big rocks, because they're not urgent, we're quite happy pushing them back. So what we suggest is you put them in first and you plan the rest of your work around them. In order to do this, you've got to be realistic about how you plan it in. That's planning in a realistic amount of time, but also, a time that you're not often needed elsewhere. So maybe Friday afternoons are a brilliant time for you because you're going to be pulled in less in other places. Maybe first thing in the morning, getting into your office early, spending that like 45 minutes before the day starts. So work out what's most realistic for you and plot those times in before everything else. And the time of day is important as well. We all have parts of the day where we have energy peaks and energy troughs. So for me, I have most of my energy, most of my focus first thing in the morning. When I was studying, I used to study on the train coming into work. And my train was early, I had a long commute. So I would get that done. When my brain was feeling most powerful, I could take in the most information. If you work the same and you try and motivate yourself to revise at half six in the evening once you get home, you're probably going to find you could spend the same amount of time getting through half as, half as much content as you could in the morning. So pay attention to what your energy levels are at different points and try and make the focus, your revision, your coursework, okay, the time that you're completing that align with your peak energy times. And some last practical tips for you. Nothing motivates us, motivates us more than a deadline. Get your exam booked. If you're doing diploma, still get your exam booked, even though you haven't done the coursework. Because if you book the exam, put it in in a realistic time frame, but you're going to motivate yourself to get through that coursework in time so you can do the revision. Chunk it up. Don't tell yourself, I'm going to do one assignment this weekend. Tell yourself, I'm going to do some research today. I'm going to write, answer one question today. Action creates motivation. What I mean by that is if you put your trainers on, you're probably a little bit more tempted to go to the gym. By taking the first step, we're more likely to move towards the goal. And if you find it hard to motivate yourself to pick up the book, tell yourself, I'm gonna read one page. I'm gonna watch one video. Once you've started, the motivation will follow. So just set yourself chunks, sizable goals. Get ahead of yourself when you can. Some of you will have jobs where you have seasonal busy periods, it's one nine, one one. Use the time where you have 
less pressure at work to get ahead. So that future version of you that's really busy with everything else is very grateful that you can give yourself a break if you didn't do much for a couple of weeks when you needed to be elsewhere. Find yourself a mentor. Gemma for the IIL arranges a mentoring scheme. Hey, it's opening up again soon. Gemma can put in the chat box exactly when, I don't know exactly when, but it's opening up again soon. Um, it's for all different levels. Certificate, diploma, advanced diploma. You'll speak to people who've recently achieved that level. So you can get guidance from them. But somewhat more importantly, I find for motivation, you will then have a cohort of people that you're studying with, people to talk to about it. Which brings me on to friends. It's a brilliant saying. You are the sum of the six people you spend most of your time with. This is why parents are so interested in who their teenagers are friends with. So who are you talking to about your exams? Are they having a good influence on you or a bad influence? Are they saying to you, yeah, no, you really do need to get that coursework done. Make sure you do it. I, I'm doing mine this weekend too. Or are they going, oh, no, it's not that important. No one really cares. Don't worry about it. It's not that important. It's not really something you need. Qualifications don't mean anything. Hey, who are you surrounding yourself with? Make sure that you're paying attention and you're getting um, enough motivation from other people that are striving towards the same goals. And then finally, build it into your routine. I mentioned a moment ago, I did my studies mostly on the train. I had a two hour commute, two hours there and two hours back, four hours a day. Um, I lived by the seaside, so it was nice. Uh, I don't do it anymore. It was nuts. But um, whilst I was doing that, I had time. So it made sense for me to do my revision. I wasn't going to do anything else with it, really, other than um, enjoy, enjoy some uh, entertainment with my trained friends. So have a look at where you can fit it in. If you are getting the train, look at taking key, key facts from all the notebooks with you. Again, you can access it on your phone. You can access um, podcasts and so on if you sign up on the app. So how can you build it into the lifestyle so you're not allocating X amount of time that you're going to sit at a desk? We're already spending enough time at desks. So how can you build this in to the routine you've already got? Okay. So we're gonna, we've got a little bit of time for questions. I'm going to answer a couple of questions that come in through the chat box as well. Please... Don't feel that your questions need to be generic. If you want to put some specific questions in about what you're thinking about doing, feel free to. Um, you can send them to me privately as well if you prefer. Um, but just to sum up, so we've gone through diploma level versus advanced diploma level. And like I say, if you want more information on either of those, we have got full um, sessions on each of them uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, some resources available to you. Please make the most of those freebies. Um, I say you can tell any of your colleagues today, it's open today to anyone who references this webinar. Um, and some motivation techniques to work through your assignments. If you're struggling for motivation day to day, come find us in the Facebook group. I share that with other people because collaboration and consensus and knowing there's other people going through the same journey as you will absolutely make you feel more comfortable about it. Okay, there is a feedback form. I think Gemma will email this round as well, but you can also take a QR code on there and put some feedback in whilst I go through and have a look at some questions. Um, so on the application, um, so you've got free access for a week. Uh, it's usually £150 plus back for you to have access to a module for a full year. What we also do is sell it to organisations. So looking through some of the organisations that came up on the list, there's a couple of you, I think, that uh, will get it for your companies already. So companies like Markel, um, Hiscox, um, Alliance Global Specialty, um, for example, they'll have it available to their staff. Um, so do uh, let us know where you work if you, you might get access through your HR department. Um, otherwise, we're very happy for you to introduce us to your HR department and we can see if we can set it up so that everyone, all of your colleagues can get free access as well. Um, but otherwise, it is set up for £150 per module per for a year. We also have some crammers packages where you get shorter access for um, a slightly lower price in there as well. And we have a paying free option, so you can split the cost if you are paying for it yourself. But please never pay for this stuff yourself without speaking to your managers 
because you will often find it is something your managers will support if you ask worst case scenario the answer is no but chances are the answer will be yes so um don't pay for anything yourself before you speak to anybody in your office i would always suggest um Oh, and, and Miller as well. So there's a couple of Miller people. Miller, we've got access to it as well. Men on here. Okay, any questions? Emma shared a little bit about the um, webinar for the uh, mentoring scheme. Uh, applications opening at the end of October until the beginning of January. So it's a fantastic way as well to network with some people. I know um, a lot of the time now, people find it hard to meet people in other organizations. So it's a brilliant way to network with people who are probably at a similar point to you, um, in certainly in terms of qualifications, but often in terms of career as well. Okay. Feel free to put your questions in or come off mute. Um, I say be as subjective as you want. If you're, if you're literally thinking, should I do this exam next or this one? You, you're welcome to put those questions in. Um, otherwise, you are free to go. You've had uh, got a couple of things that are going to help you there. Um, and come say hi to us on, um, on Facebook. Thanks so much, Sam. That was uh, really helpful. Lots of useful resources. Um, and yeah, thank you for kindly offering that free access to everybody which you to take up. Uh, and as we said, if you organise organizations aren't aware do let them know about empowered development and all the resources and techniques are on offer to help you colleagues with your studies um as um sam said there was that qr code on the previous slide you'll also be sent and all that has a link to access the feedback survey um if you could take a couple of minutes just to complete that we really appreciate feedback you could give us on uh, future topics for webinars that you'd like to see um that would be really helpful just so we can kind of steer our program and make sure we're delivering here about cool. but um yeah if you've got no other questions or feel free to contact me afterwards um or you've also got the empowered development email uh we're here to support you with your studies so please do let us know so it's gonna say so we're gonna we will upload a link on the um IAL website it will be on the web page that you use to register for the session and also empower development have a youtube channel which it will be uploaded there along with loads of other resources that they offer